Welcome to the first video about noun clauses. Be sure to take notes on your noun clause handout as you watch. As you recall, a noun can be a person, place, thing, or idea. A clause is a subject-verb combination, and an independent clause can stand alone as a sentence. However, a dependent clause functions as an adverb, adjective, or a noun in the sentence and cannot stand alone. Noun clauses are subject-verb combinations that cannot stand alone as sentences. They serve noun functions in sentences. So let's pause to review the seven noun functions. In your notes, write down the following seven noun functions. It's going to be important to remember them in order to identify and to use noun clauses correctly. Noun clauses begin with interrogative pronouns, interrogative adverbs, and the expletive that. Remember, adverb clauses begin with subordinating conjunctions, and adjective clauses begin with relative pronouns and relative adverbs. But noun clauses begin with interrogative pronouns, interrogative adverbs, and the expletive that. The word interrogative means relating to a question. Noun clauses often imply an unknown or ask an indirect question, which is a question embedded in a statement. The question here, what will be for lunch, is embedded in the statement, I wonder what will be for lunch. Interrogative pronouns stand in for nouns in the formation of a question, as in the example, who sang the anthem. And they can also introduce noun clauses, which is asking an indirect question. She asked who sang the anthem. In both the independent and dependent clauses here, the interrogative pronoun who is acting as the subject of the verb sang. Here is a list of the interrogative pronouns. Take a minute to write them down in your notes. Who and whom look similar, so how do you know which to use? This situation is when you have to consider case. Do you need a subject or an object? Let's flash back. Pronoun case is determined by the purpose or the function of the pronoun in the sentence. A subjective case is required if the pronoun serves as a subject or as a predicate nominative, but the objective case is required if the pronoun is used as an object, such as a direct object, indirect object, or object of the preposition. Remember that we introduced case when we learned about personal pronouns. The function of the pronoun in the sentence determines which pronoun that you need to use. The same is true for the interrogative pronouns who and whom and whoever and whomever. For interrogative pronouns, when you need a subject or predicate nominative in your clause, use who or whoever. If you need a direct object, indirect object, or an object of a preposition in your clause, use whom or whomever. I didn't know who asked the question. Who is the subject of the action verb asked in the dependent clause? I didn't know whom Keeley chose. Whom is the direct object of the action verb chose in the second dependent clause. Noun clauses can also begin with interrogative adverbs. They introduce noun clauses and function as adverbs in the dependent clause. Here are a few common interrogative adverbs. How, if, why, whether, when, where, whenever, wherever. 
Lastly, noun clauses can begin with the expletive that. An expletive does not serve a grammatical function in the sentence. So even though it looks like a pronoun, it is not functioning as a noun, which is how you know it's an expletive. That I wanted lunch is a dependent clause because it contains a subject verb combination, but cannot stand alone as a complete sentence. The subject is I, the verb is wanted, and the direct object is lunch. The word that only serves the purpose of introducing the noun clause and making it dependent. In the second sentence, you can see that the expletive is implied. As you learned with adjective clauses, if you see two subject verb combinations next to each other that are not joined with a comma and a coordinating conjunction or with a semicolon, look for the implied expletive. So how do we find noun clauses? Here are the first steps. Identify verbs by type and their subjects, underline interrogative pronouns, interrogative adverbs, or the expletive that, and then bracket the noun clause. Let's look at examples of noun clauses serving as each of the seven noun functions. Always find the verbs first and then find their subjects. In the first sentence, the verb phrase is should attend. Our next step is to ask who or what should attend which leads us to the subject, kids. In the second sentence, follow the same steps. Where are the verbs and where are their subjects? The two verb phrases are loves and should attend. Ask who or what loves. Here, the interrogative pronoun whoever is the subject of loves and the subject of the dependent clause, whoever loves fun surprises. In order to find the subject of should attend, you ask who or what should attend, which leads you to identify the noun clause, whoever loves fun surprises, as the subject of the independent clause. In the first sentence, is is the be verb. Its subject is regret. I know to look for a predicate nominative after a be verb that renames the subject, and here the predicate nominative is chemistry. In the second sentence, I have located the additional verb studied and its subject, I. I also found the expletive that, which I've underlined. Now, when I look at my be verb is and look for a predicate nominative that renames my subject, regret equals what, I can see that my noun clause is acting as a predicate nominative. As you remember, when you locate an action verb and its subject, you need to ask yourself who or what is receiving the action of the verb in order to see if there are any direct objects. In this sentence, what was chosen? The location, which is the direct object. In the second sentence, I have identified the verb phrase, would hang, and its subject, she. I've also identified an interrogative adverb, where, which I've underlined. It begins the dependent clause. I have two action verbs in the sentence, chose and hang. What was hung? The painting, which is the direct object within the dependent clause. Next, I ask, what was chosen? where she would hang the painting. The dependent clause is functioning as the direct object of the verb chose, just like the single word location does in the first sentence. We begin with the same steps. Our verbs are will give. Who or what will give? The judges. What was given? A thousand dollars. Who or what received the direct object? Here we have an indirect object, Jamal. In our second sentence, whoever wins the race acts as the indirect object because it receives the direct object, dollars. In the noun clause, the interrogative pronoun, whoever, both introduces the noun clause and functions as the subject of the verb, 
wins. In the first sentence, there are two prepositional phrases, in the cause and of the accident. It's important to be able to find prepositions, so review your list from Unit 1 if needed. In the second sentence, there is a second subject verb combination, accident happened, that is introduced by the interrogative adverb how, which makes the clause dependent. This dependent clause follows the preposition in, and so the noun clause is functioning as the object of the preposition. In the first sentence, the appositive human equality comes immediately after the noun it renames, belief. Remember, nouns and their appositives are never separated by verbs. In our second sentence, the noun clause, that humans have equal value, is acting as an appositive. That humans have equal value is renaming belief, not describing it. A quick way to check to see if a clause is acting as a noun appositive or an adjective is to insert the verb is or the pronoun which at the beginning of the clause. The belief is that humans have equal value. That makes sense. Rather than the belief which humans have value. That does not make sense. So we know that we're looking at a noun appositive renaming the word belief. Object complements, which can be adjectives or nouns, modify direct objects. Object complement nouns rename the direct object and also change the meaning of the sentence with the additional information. I considered Jan means I thought about Jan, but I considered Jan my friend adds additional information that changes what the sentence means. In the second sentence, I've identified the second subject verb combination, pipes were made, and the interrogative adverb, how. So I know that this clause is dependent. It follows the direct object, problem, and renames it, how the pipes were made. By adding this information after the direct object, the meaning of the sentence has changed. The plumber isn't just thinking about the problem. She thinks that the problem is how the pipes were made. To review, here are the steps to take when identifying noun clauses. Identify verbs by type and their corresponding subjects. Underline interrogative pronouns, interrogative adverbs, and expletives that. Bracket noun clauses and identify their functions. And lastly, Identify noun and pronoun functions within the noun clauses. We'll take a break here, and in the next video, you'll practice identifying noun clauses in the sentences on page 3 of your handout. See you soon!